It's an absolute joy to have you here at the CIM Sustainability Summit. Um, could you just please summarise We Are Eight as a channel for anyone that didn't have the benefit of obviously hearing the talk a bit earlier on today? Just summarise kind of the key points for me. And also, I think, Ria, it's really interesting that you said you kind of like got the concept immediately. It'd be great to know kind of what really stood out for you as well as a channel. On a, on a macro level, this is where we're uniting to change the world. I mean, in terms of what eight is, we're a, we're a hate-free social app where you're valued, paid, and change the world every time you watch an ad with donations being made to charity and money going into your own pocket. But it's really where we come together as people, and the eight is the infinite power of people coming together to solve the world's biggest problems. You know, on social, the wonderful thing about social, it's connected two billion people on the planet, but it's actually never united us and it's never empowered us and it's actually sold us. You know, we the people are the largest unpaid workforce in human history and it's time for that to evolve into a place, technology that serves us and values us and rewards us. It's incredibly powerful, isn't it? So mm. what about the concept was it that you said you kind of got it in that five minutes, you were, you were sold straight away? Yeah, I'm, I met um, Sue for a colleague at BT and immediately after probably three or four minutes, it was that this was an opportunity for me to really have tangible change for people that have championed me throughout my career. So I've been able to, to build a following of in the 20s of millions of followers, all people that went through good and bad times, wins and losses, but never been able to give anything back. I've always taken, I've got big commercial contracts and I've been paid for, for my time, etc. through these people, never been able to give anything back. Now, mm -hmm. I can. Now, if, they, if, I, if I say to them, come onto the We Are Eight app, join, download it, you can now be paid for watching two minutes a day of adverts where you're actually normally thrown 10,000 impressions on average, we are, a day. Now you can watch two, two minutes at your own leisure, on the toilet, in bed, on the train, <laughs> wherever it is, and you can be paid for it. So at the end of the month, you can pay your phone bill, you can pay whatever bill you want to pay, utility bill, you can pay it through this. Now, for somebody like me, who's always been taken, this is my opportunity to give back. Mm, give back to your community and really yeah. build that sense of mutual yeah, value. Yeah, everyone can do that. It's not just me. Anyone that comes on there can do that. Mm. And you've already got some amazing people signing up to use the platform as well and to come on as content creators, haven't you? Could you mm. tell us a little bit about that as well? Yeah, so some of them haven't been announced publicly. Oh, but okay. Yeah. <laughs> so Rio's doing a big call to arms on Earth Day, April 22nd, uh, where he's saying, you know what? Let's set a, 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 a mission out there where we say 80 million people by the World Cup by November this year, where there'll also coincidentally be 8 billion human beings on our beautiful, precious planet. So let's get to 80 million people standing united on eight and um, 10 million people a month and then we can create the change that we want to see in the world. And so Rio's uh, friends, family, colleagues, and it's sort of had this beautiful ripple effect uh, where so many artists, musicians... Uh, and it's an easy sell. This is a, <laughs> like, it's, it's not even like you've got to... You, you, you take a couple of minutes and tell people, if they don't get it, they're obviously not listening. <laughs> because you can actually introduce someone to this, they can get paid to watch it, mm. they can also help with the environment, and they can help with a charity. I don't know anywhere else you can do that in one place without actually having to pay or give something. This well, is about receiving. We're the only global brand that wants mm. to put money in your pocket. Mm, exactly. Absolutely. Rather than sell you something. You know, it's stopping this all this consumerism that, you know, it's it's consume less, share more, let's unite, be really conscious, celebrate what we have in common, come together, get inspired by awesome content. Watch ads for two minutes a day and change the world. On a toilet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll stick with that as the line, shall we? Put that on everything. Perfect. <laughs> it's a no-brainer, isn't it, really? I think is the key thing. You know Not on the toilet, I mean. <laughs> Do you know I mean, maybe that too. The whole idea, you know, we're the largest unpaid workforce in human history, but mm. we'll actually be so 
productive while we're on the toilet. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> no time to waste. That's going to be highly valuable time. Amazing, amazing. Let's put that everywhere. Put that on the caps next, maybe. Um, Fab, so it's interesting because you talked about kind of Facebook being the this force that is really taking the money, taking the value from consumers at large. Do you think it is possible for the existing technologies that exist within social media to adopt more sustainable business practices? Or do you see disruption as the route to making this Disruption. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. I mean, from your perspective, you, you've. I've got experience. So I, I've actually been to meetings on Zooms, obviously, the last two years. That's all we've been able mm-hmm. to do. But speaking to people that run these companies or have big voices that could actually create the change mm-hmm. and create a culture that we're advocating where there's no hate speech and there's no um, discrimination and the ability to just spout what you want without any consequences. Mm-hmm. That's the problem. That's the issue. And I think the fact that on this We Are Eight platform, you have to give identification at the beginning. Mm. Whereas on all, all the other platforms, you can go be- and hide behind an egg or a curtain that you won't be seen. So then you feel very comfortable spouting negative, discriminative words and, and, and sentences. So that's a big changer and big, for me, a huge reason, is another reason why I'm here. But that's what I mean. There's so many positive layers mm. that we could be here for a long time telling you them, but we're just obviously hitting it with a the top line ones at a minute. Absolutely. And it was amazing to me after the whole stop hate for profit. I mean, when we saw Patagonia come yeah. out and then everyone... They're a great example. Yeah. But the fact that thousands of brands didn't follow them was really incredible to me because mm. I thought this is the catalyst moment where we're seeing thousands of brands boycott Facebook, mm. but Facebook just kept doing what they were doing. They did not change anything and they continue to fuel climate misinformation hate speech racist sexist commentary all of this stuff and that's when we thought if brands and advertisers can't stop them and slowly the advertisers with the exception of patagonia who stood firm everyone else kind of went back the only thing as rio says that's going to change it is the evolution and it's not just so it no longer becomes about stopping them doing anything. Mm. It's actually great, you can stay on Facebook, you can tweet on Twitter, you can dance on TikTok, but you can join We Are Eight and change the world. And I think that's the beautiful evolution of of coming to a new place Mm. that's about love, not hate. It's about Earth, not Mars. It's about running through the (laughs) forest, not, you know, going meta. I think someone, I don't know who it was, I can't remember, spoke about having examples um, to help create change and to create that culture and, and then build a community through that. And you need the examples to do it. And Patagonia are a great example that they're a business that hasn't gone under mm-hmm. because they've come out of the norm yeah. and said we're going to step away from Facebook for these reasons. Mm-hmm. And other companies surely must be looking at that and saying actually there is, a, there is a way and a world that we can live in where we are doing better. And so that's got to be a good following, an example they can follow. Right. I mean, when Nike stood with Colin Kaepernick, that there was that moment that it took bravery for them to say, no, we do not tolerate this racial bias and profiling. We have to make a stand. And they grew massively, you know. Brands, it's been proved time and time again, as Rio said on stage, I mean, brands that live by a set of values Mm. win. I mean, I love people that live by a set of values. I love brands that live by a set of values. Mm. And that's all that matters at the end of the day, our integrity and and our values. Mm. It's interesting that you touched on being brave there because that was something that really resonated with me that you said on stage. It's about taking a stand and you know making brave decisions mm. thinking about being brave when it comes to the future of social media for you does it feel positive does it feel like the future of social media and by proxy digital marketing is it going to be a positive space like the kind of spaces that you guys are creating through the eight platform i think that's so true i think that from the the meetings and gatherings that we've been involved in with digital agencies um the feedback immediately and the energy in the room tells me that people want to do this, mm-hmm. but then it's about actions afterwards. So in that room at that moment, everyone's like, yes. And you feel it in there, in that room there before we mm-hmm. come in here to have this interview. You can feel an energy that's very positive and everyone's nodding and like, I get it now. Mm-hmm. But 
that bravery needs to come out of their pores on everyday working life and then when they go and speak up in the actual uh, business that they're in with that confidence and with that purpose and with the idea of the impact they can have from that energy they had in that room and they will continue that. Absolutely. Sir Alex would be loving you right mm-hmm. now. Right. But that's what he was like. He was like, listen, I've got an idea and I feel that it's going to be positive, not just for me, but for the group. Mm. And it's always, I think it's about, and I think that's how I, I led when I was in the dressing room. It wasn't about, if I spoke and I, I talked out or I was aggressive or I was trying to cajole or anything, it wasn't from a selfish perspective. It was about empowering other people to be successful. And I think this is definitely what we are is about. Yeah. Absolutely. It's about others. You know, yeah. that's actually what yeah. makes you happy in life. Yeah. Mm. You know, when I grew up, the idea of taking a selfie, you were actually a dickhead if you took a photo of yourself. Yeah. <laughs> and now the world is taking a selfie wow. and actually we're more isolated and lonely and unhappy than ever before. And what aid is about, it's about others and looking at looking out the window and realizing how wonderful it feels to do things for other people. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that's really almost the kind of USP that sits at the heart of the business, isn't it? Is that so much of social media is isolating and is about the individual, but this really what you're doing now is about the community and about the collective good. And I think that shows through in everything that you're kind of driving towards in We Are Eight. Very exciting. Yeah, you. <laughs> you get it. I will. That's fine. <laughs> All right, deal. <laughs> Fab, thank you so much, you guys, for your time. It's been an thank absolute you. pleasure to speak to you. Thank, thank you. you.